The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat, mga kapatid. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Pakibati nga ng Happy Feast Day of the Immaculate Conception ang ating mga katabi. Happy Feast Day po, everybody. This is a great and big feast, not just here in the country, but all over the world. Almost all local churches are consecrated to the Immaculate Conception. Our church in the Manila Cathedral, the mother church in the country, is entrusted to the Immaculate Conception. In Mary, we find the ideal. We find in Mary the lofty aspiration of each one of us ordinary Christians. Not because she's better or higher or more superior in dignity. She's one like us. She was a human being like us. But when it comes to her fidelity, when it comes to her surrender and obedience to the will of God, nothing quite matches her. Kaya yun po ang ating ginagawa ngayon. We look to Mary because she is our inspiration and aspiration of what it means to be a daughter, a son of God. Last month, I was in Rome with some pilgrims, and I think some of them are here. I saw them. Hindi nila siguro na kita yung pinuntahan naming Spanish steps. And there was just a few of them that was with me, close to me. And we went to this place, kasi pagod na silang maglakad. There was this Spanish steps in Rome. Around 135 steps going up. And there, as an image of Mama Mary, on top of those Spanish steps in Rome, the image of the Immaculate Conception. And it is said that by tradition, all popes, all bishops would have to go there 
in order to give their respect and courtesy to the Blessed Mother. You have to take the steps, ascend around 130 or 150 steps going up. The symbolism is every priest or every Christian for that matter has to take the steps going up to Mama Mary so that we can be like her. Kailangan din nating na maglakad, paakyat para maging katulad tayo ni Maria sa ating pamumuhay. And what is the noblest of all virtues or qualities of Mary? Her Immaculate Conception. Not by her own merit, hindi dahil sa kanyang kagalingan, kung hindi dahil sa plano ng Diyos. She is to be the mother of the Son of God. She is to be the mother of the Messiah. So in the plan of God, beginning with the fall of Adam and Eve, in order to restore humanity back to Him, to paradise, to the original justice and purity, God already planned very early on of a new Eve. A new Eve that shall be preserved from sin, from any kind of sin or any kind of stain, so that this woman will be worthy of carrying in her womb the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So let it be said very clearly, first of all, that Mary is preserved from any kind of sin according to our faith, not because of her merit, but because of the superabundance of the grace of God, because of the boundless love of God for all, in His great desire to save us, He wanted to preserve one that can worthily carry His Son to be born. He, she is the new Eve. If the first Eve that we heard in the first reading turned away from God, disobeyed God because of just a little bite of a fruit, Mary will restore the fallen humanity by way of a simple yes. Where we have fallen because of Eve and Adam, through Mary, we are restored when Mary said, yes, thy will be done. And so the plan of God of redemption is complete. The, the first half is God's plan. I will preserve this woman from any kind of sin. But she has to reciprocate. Otherwise, it won't go according to plan. So when Mary said yes, when she cooperated with the plan of God, even if she did not understand fully, even if there was a question lingering in her mind, how can this be? She consented and she said, Fiat, thy will be done. Yes. How do we become like Mary? Maybe we are not like Mary when it comes to being spared from original sin. But how can we become like Mary when we scale the steps towards sanctity and holiness? And what are these steps towards holiness? Our daily acts of love. Our daily acts of devotion to God. Our daily acts of fidelity and loyalty to Him. These are the steps that we need to do every day. A big yes and a small yes. Meron po akong kinasal lately na mag-asawa. Simple lang ang wedding nila. Hindi magarbo, hindi mabongga. Maliit lang yung chapel. Konti lang ang bisita. And they were apologetic in telling me, Father, Pasensya na po kayo. Hindi po marangya ang aming wedding. Simpleng-simpleng wedding lang po. Hindi pa po kami nakakaipon. konti pa lang. Kaya, uh, 
Baka po ba disappoint po kayo? They were telling me. Kasi simple ang wedding. But I was telling them, no. In my 25 years as a priest, that I have officiated weddings, hundreds of them, your wedding is one of the most, for me, most meaningful. Because you have chosen the better part of the wedding, not the trappings. Kasi wala din ho silang wedding coordinator. Hindi kagaya ng mga bonggang wedding, talagang nandun lahat. Pero sa kanila, walang wedding coordinator, walang mga walang mga kung ano-anong mga halo pa maliban sa ang sabi nila we just want to say our I do we just want to profess our love for each other nothing more nothing less and I said to them and you have chosen the better part you have chosen the better way to do it not by indulging too much in extravagance and in the ephemeral, temporary, superficial things. What is important in any wedding, I was telling them, is what you have in your heart. The love that you keep in your heart for each other. The yes that you give to each other in vows of marriage. And the yes that you have to give to each other every day. To be immaculate doesn't mean to be faultless. To be immaculate means a daily act of fidelity, a daily act of devotion and loyalty. Sometimes we look at holiness as a big word. Parang hindi po madaling maging banal, Father. It's hard to be a saint or to be holy or to be, to be pure. That's true. Because there are a lot of distractions around us. There are just too many things that draw us away from, from God and our focus and attention on God. Yes, that's the, perhaps the downside of the ultra-modern life. Ang daming mga bagay na humihila sa atin. Ang daming mga makikinang na mga palamuti at ilaw na nawawala tayo sa kung anong dapat gawin. Why is Mary full of grace? And why is Mary immaculate? Because she was laser-focused on God alone. Nothing else. No one else. But God and doing His will. And we can be like that. Yes, Mary is the ideal. Mary is the model but we can do that as well every day. If we are focused on God, on doing His will, on pleasing Him every day in everything that we do. So I was telling this, this young couple, never apologize for the simplicity of your life. Never apologize for the humility of your heart because that is what is more important what is important right now, nowadays, is an authentic, pure, kind, true heart. That's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us pure and immaculate. What our heart contains, what our mind desires, what we aspire for in life. To be pure does not mean that you are faultless. To be pure means that your heart is in the right place and your mind is focused on the right things. You are not distracted by so many others that are not exactly important or essential in our life. That's what makes Mary so special because her life from beginning till the end was consecrated, entrusted, surrendered to God alone. Mary, the angel said to her, Hail, full of grace. Hail, full of grace. Grazia plena. Why is Mary full of grace? Not because she was the richest, 
at that time not because she was living in a palace not because she was the most educated why was mary greeted by the angel as gratia plena puno ng gracia because the lord is with you if the lord is with you you will be full of grace so this in this mass let us try to go to our go and look at ourselves let's do a little examination of ourselves what dominates our heart what captures our heart what is there in our heart if it is love of god if it is kindness and loyalty and fidelity to god then we may not be like mary in terms of perfection and charity but certainly we are on our way to holiness we can ascend step by step to where mary is if daily we are able to say i love you lord no one else but you i will not be distracted i will try to be faithful to your will every day minsan po sa buhay natin ang dami ng mga pinagkakaabalahan ang dami na nating mga contaminations ang dami nating mga distractions ang dami nating mga bagay na tinitingnan na akala natin yun ang mas importante pero si Maria binibigay sa atin ng katotohanan simplify kapatid simplify the more simple your life is the more you become single hearted and the more you become focused on what is truly needed and essential in life and Mary has found that in her life just a final story I was looking at my cabinet kasi ngayong Pasko gawain ko po madalas na tingnan ng mga nasa loob and I try to get rid of as many things as possible inside the closet or the cabinet alam niyo po minsan o oh, dati nung ako po ay nag-aaral pa lamang I remember I had only around three pairs of of pants by intention I was so idealistic at that time when I was when I was in 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 the seminary I really intended na tatlo lang ang pantalon ko tatlo lang and I intended intended it to be that way ngayon po siguro 50 na ang pantalon ko nung nag-aaral ako ang bilis mo magbihis kasi tatlo lang ang pagpipilian mo eh ang bilis magbihis ngayon po hirap na hirap ako 50 yung pantalon mo alin dito isusuot ko kaya minsan 5 minutes titinan mo yung yung mga pantalon mo alin ba dito gusto ko isuot ngayon the tyranny of choice they call it or the paradox of choice they call it sometimes when life is so complicated we don't know which is which mary tells us one choice choose god and everything else will settle down so pwede po ba may assignment ako sa inyo kagaya ni bishop mayugba pag nandito siya pwede bang bumalik kayo sa mga closet cabinet ninyo Sino po yung kagaya ko na pag pumipili ng damit, inaabot ng limang minuto? Walang matataas ng kamay. Kasi sa dami-dami na mga pipiliin mo, alin dito yung gusto ko ngayon? Ito, pag sinukat mo, ay ayoko nito, balik mo, kuha ka na naman ng isa. Ay ayoko nito, yung iba naman. Hanggang sa yung napili mo, hindi pala bagay sa'yo. 
In the complexity of life, in modernity, in our life today, the more we have choices, the, th the, the more we think we are free. No. The more choices that we have, the more enslaved we become. Slave to the so-called freedom, when in fact, the more choices we have, the less free we are. Because we are at the mercy of the objects and things around us. If you want to be free, get rid of those choices. Tatlo lang itira mo. Madaling mamili. Sa mga mag-asawa, ganun din. Get rid of the other choices. Be contented with one. And life shall be free. And you shall be light. Di po ba? Sayang ang labing isang taon kapag... Uh, Pwede ka namang makontento na lang sa isa eh. Ayan to yun. Ayan tuloy. Mary, only one. She just had God. No one else. And that's why she's full of grace. Kung gusto nating mapuspos ng biyaya, let your choice and your yes be with God alone. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo sa ating banal na misa. Palapakan natin ng ating mahal na inang Maria, Mama Mary. You are our, you are our inspiration and aspiration. Ito pong mga bulaklak na nakikita niyo sa harap is donated by uh, a flower shop, a flower company, Flor de Monde, Manila. Naikwento nung may-ari sa akin, Father Binibigay namin yung mga bulaklak na ito sa inyo. Every special occasion ni Mama Mary, meron tayong mga beautiful flowers. Mahal po yung mga yan kasi Ecuadorian flowers po yan. At lang sabi sa kanya, baka naman malugi ka dahil sa marami kang binibigay na bulaklak. You know what he said to me? The owner of Flor de Monde, sabi niya, yung mga bulaklak na pinibenta namin, Father, hindi naman amin talaga yon kay Mama Mary yon Kung ano man yung na kumikita sa amin, salamat. Pero yung bulaklak talaga na aming negosyo ay intended talaga para kay Mama Mary. So they are a great devotee of the Blessed Mother. And their company is giving flowers or providing flowers for special occasions especially for Marian occasions. Kaya, uh, sabi ko sa kanya, hindi ka talaga malulugi niyan. Kasi si Maria ang talagang magbibigay sa inyo ng tagumpay sa inyong mga ginagawa. I think that's what is needed. We need to be single-hearted in our focus. Like Mary, all for the glory of God. Whatever business you are in, whatever you are doing, all for God. If you are like Mary, everything that you do is to say yes to the will of God, then I think the Lord will know and should know how to unfold His best plans for you and your family. Amen? So, on this Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, be like Mary, single-hearted, focus on God alone. You will be full of grace again and again every day. I invite you tomorrow, we will have our Advent recollection. We will prepare for Christmas with this reflection on whispering hope, welcoming light. Minsan po, di natin kayang isigaw ang pag-asa. Pero kung ibulong mo ito, pwede na rin naman to whisper hope sometimes if that is what we are capable at, at that moment. So let us prepare ourselves for Christmas. We reflect on hope and light. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our loving God bless you and your family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.